Hello and welcome back to Altcoin Boss Spotlight with me, Leia Heilpern, where we speak to thought leaders, entrepreneurs and innovators in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next and if you enjoy the segment then hit like as it helps us grow the channel. Joining us today is Philippe Castro, the CIO and co-founder of Utrust, a payment solution which allows merchants to accept digital currencies. Utrust was founded in 2017 and it looks to power businesses across 180 countries in many different industries. Philippe has been an advocate for DLTs in the world of finance. He regularly talks at events, talks on panels about the benefits of these emerging technologies. Philippe, it's great to have you today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Now, we do have a lot to discuss and I want to jump straight in because cryptocurrencies are still quite a long way away from mass adoption, particularly when it comes to transactional use. So do you think that payment solutions like yours answer to a small niche? Well, I would say that the general outlook is that right now there are small niche in the payments market, but they were a growing niche. And I think that's the, the key thing that we need to focus right now. For mass adoption, absolutely, we are in early stages. Uh, so we believe that right now is a great time to build the technology, the foundations, uh, great ways, uh, UX-wise, technology-wise for people to come over and start using this in mass in the future. But absolutely, right now, when we look at the whole spectrum of payments, uh, we're not yet uh, at a significant margin, but it's growing. And we see a lot of positive developments related to this. We, we see uh, stable coins, we see Libra initiative, uh, initiatives like Libra, uh, government-backed uh, cryptocurrencies or digital currencies such as uh, uh, China's DCEP, a future digital dollar, a future digital euro. So there's a lot of uh, factors playing in that will add to all of this market and make it basically explode in the next decade or so. Absolutely, you're, you're right. I think we've seen how the space has expanded. We've seen how it's grown. We've seen how regulators and um, you know governments are slightly warming to it. Um, but since crypto is still very new, naturally merchants must be quite reluctant um, when it comes to it. So what are some of their biggest concerns and how do you guys actually go about addressing this? Yeah, uh, especially in the segment that we work in, merchants are very traditional. They're quite uh, reluctant to add uh, new forms of payment to especially in this uh in this market because they have this wrong association that this is a very volatile or can be a very volatile and, and risky uh business proposition and that's actually something we add and, and provide to those merchants a way for them to accept uh, digital currencies from a whole new segment of customers but none of the associated risk so for them it's business as usual uh, new revenue stream a way to accept a whole new range of customers, decrease their operational costs at uh, extremely low cost, and providing something for them to add to the value proposition as well, a way to capture a whole new range of users. And we think this is gonna be a really, really amazing piece of the market. And of course, right now they are reluctant. Uh, some of them are reluctant, but I think what we provide to overcome that reluctancy is this facilitation, especially minimizing or eliminating uh, volatility and providing that assurance to the merchant that for them, they only have to deal uh, with the fiat side and not the crypto part. And you talk about um, these benefits and you're saying, you know, it opens up a whole new market for them, but surely everybody has fiat, right? So how does it then directly actually benefit the merchants? Why should they get involved in crypto? Well, uh, one of the key value propositions is for them, this is a complementary way uh, for them to accept uh, customers. And although they're accepting customers that pay with cryptocurrency, uh, for them, uh, they are not really accepting cryptocurrency directly. Uh, we are settling for them uh, in fiat currency in US dollars, euros, uh, British pounds. 
And it's a way to take away the risk for them. So for them, it's the same thing, business as usual. And we believe that will play a key role in increasing the market share of payments uh, in this in this industry. But we've also seen how cryptocurrency um, projects and businesses have tried to move into that regular space. And there's been a lot of regulatory issues around that. So what kind of regulatory issues have you faced? Well, I would say that mo most of our it or most of the challenges that we faced uh, are related to the challenges of the merchants themselves. So one of the key uh, fears for the merchants to accept uh, cryptocurrency or deal with crypto assets is exactly what you mentioned, uh, regulatory uh, concerns. I think the way we work with them to overcome this is to provide that layer, layer of de-risking for them to mm -hmm. enable them to, to a fully credible player to accept crypto payments, but at the same time to work with reputable partners to provide that settlement uh, for them. And for us, the trust relationship with our merchants is very important. Uh, we do have a formal onboarding process for our merchants. Uh, it's not, uh, I, I would say it's a, it's a due diligence process that we have to take with each merchant. And if you follow those procedures, there's no uh, there's no issue. In a way, I would say we act more like a, a traditional payment provider in that in that regard than than a crypto company. Uh, we do uh, we do operate on both sides, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have to interface with traditional players who have yes. uh, different needs from what we call traditional uh, crypto players in an in industry. So providing um, a non-traditional service, but providing it in a traditional way, I guess. Yeah, yeah, in a, in a whole new segment. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of people um, have compared um, Utrust to PayPal. They sort of say it's the cryptocurrency of PayPal. So can you shed some light on this? Would you compare yourselves in any way? Well, I, I do think that it's a fair comparison. Um, I see a lot of parallels. Uh, if you look at PayPal at their inception stage and what we do as a business, it's very much, uh, I wouldn't say the same because the fundamental technology layer is different. Uh, if you compare right now with PayPal, of course, we work on different technological rails. Uh, uh, PayPal doesn't work on blockchain solutions. It's a completely uh, fiat-based solution. Uh, but in terms of the value proposition, especially when you compare with PayPal at their inception stage. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that's a fair comparison. And I do believe that in that context, we are the PayPal of cryptocurrency. So speaking of um, being the PayPal of cryptocurrencies, um, there's also BitPay, um, who are arguably a competitor. So how are you guys different from them? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, we do have competitors in the space. Again, uh, even PayPal has competitors uh, in their space since inception, and that's that's natural. Uh, if there were no competitors, there would be no market, uh, no opportunity for, uh, to take. And as and in any market, there are different players competing uh, with a different value proposition. Uh, in our case, uh, the way I think we are quite different uh, in, in two main ways. Uh, one is in our community approach, in the way we connect both sides, merchants and uh, buyers alike. When we work with our merchants uh, as well, one key difference is we don't see our merchants as just uh, another service user. That's not our approach uh, with merchants. For us, the merchants are our partners. We want them to grow. We want to bring more users to their websites. They are our privileged partners. And that's the kind of a, the relationship we want to have with our pioneer merchants. Also, uh, currency selection is uh, quite quite a difference uh, from uh, from BitPay. Geographical focus as well. Uh, again, uh, BitPay has a strong regional presence in the United States. We actually uh, have a more uh, regional focus uh, in the European Union so far. So it's kind of a it's a different market focus at the inception stage. Of course, BitPay they they started a while back. Uh, they're in a different phase, which is brings pros and cons. But I think. There's fundamental differences. And of course, I haven't even reached out to, to the brand and the power of the branding uh, in both users and merchants. 
I just want to move on now um, and look at the token because you do have um, UTK. So firstly, yeah. can you tell us about this token? How does it work? Um, and also, what are the benefits? What are the use cases of it? Absolutely. So UTK is a token that is uh, accepted in the platform uh, as long as as you, as you have it in your wallet alongside other uh, accepted cryptocurrencies. And you can use it to purchase uh, goods and services in the associated merchants. So as a platform, we are quite agnostic. We want to be a cryptocurrency agnostic, but we wanted to introduce a token that provides uh, key benefits uh, for users and merchants. Currently, the current, uh, the best um, description or its benefit that you can, we can bring to the market with uh, the UTK is zero fees. So right now, uh, paying with UTK instead of uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, or other of the support currencies, actually today we actually added uh, USDT to the platform. It's just been announced a few hours ago. Uh, one of the key benefits for UTK is the, the zero fees. Yeah, if you use UTK for your purchase, uh, there are no associated fees. Okay, so very interesting that. And also congratulations um, on the announcement. Um, some great news um, from you guys. Thank you. Just finally, um, how has the current market, the current climate right now, because of everything that's going on with the virus, actually affected the business? And also what can we then expect from you, Trust, in the next coming six months? Yeah, uh, in terms of affecting the business, uh, again, w since our inception, uh, as a software company, we have been very remote friendly. So in that sense, in terms of development and prioritization and uh, development of new features, it hasn't affected uh, so far. Of course, uh, there have been uh, some affected sectors. The merchants that we work uh, with, some of them, of course, they've been affected by the macroeconomic conditions. But one key thing is that despite all this uh, present uh, negativity and uh, the bad outlook on the markets and everything we see on the news, it's, it, it paints a grim outlook. We actually see a silver lining in this. And what we see is that a lot of the merchants uh, that have had like an omni-channel approach to the market are now focusing a lot on the online channel. Uh, which means that there will be a lot of opportunity to work with those merchants to help them grow uh, in, into a focused segment on the online channel, something that they might not have in, in devoting resources in the past because they had to contend with online and offline channel. So we actually see a, quite a silver lining in this because there will be not only more businesses focusing on the online channel, but also more users using online channels in total, even users from a segment that traditionally didn't use uh, online channels. I'm talking about uh, more older populations specifically, perhaps that didn't see the need or didn't interact with technology so much, but we have seen a huge increase uh, in this in this usage by everyone because they're, they're forced to do because of confinement. So. We think that this will present a really great opportunity for everyone doing their business online, blockchain or uh, fintech in general. In the next six months, uh, well, uh, we plan to continue our, our scheduled release of new features, uh, adding more currency. Today was actually one of the planned uh, announcements as well. And we will obviously continue to grow in the number of merchants. Uh, that's something that we'll be announcing periodically as more and more merchants uh, join uh, our platform and our family and please stay tuned for more announcements in the future but it's going to be it's going to be great the next six months we'll just continue to to grow as as we plan to do so but i think it's really interesting um you mentioned you know it, it's kind of that push to get everybody online and in some way despite all the turmoil um you know you're still able to benefit from it and i think i'm hearing a lot of that um particularly from fintech companies. So it's quite interesting just to see how this will play out for the space in general. Philippe, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show with us today. Thank you, it's been my pleasure.